I was born in Selma, Alabama in 1957, the segregated South. In honor of Black History Month, I'm sharing a quick timeline of my childhood growing up in Selma, Alabama uh, during the time of Dr. Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement. Please join me. My journey will begin here in downtown Selma on Broad Street, which leads to the famous Edmund Pettus Bridge. The bridge is named after Edmund Pettus, a lawyer and decorated Confederate general who became a U.S. Senator and he was leader of the Ku Klux Klan. My birth certificate reads race colored and my address, I was born on a street that was named after Edmund Pettus. I was born on Pettus Street. I was eight years old when Dr. Martin Luther King led approximately 800 people across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in an attempt to begin the Selma to Montgomery March. Among those peaceful demonstrators were my older brothers and sisters who were still in high school. They attended mass meetings and also went to jail with Dr. Martin Luther King. Today, those brave students that walked out of R.B. Hudson High School are known as foot soldiers. At eight years old, I was busy playing jacks, square, hula hoop. We were skating and playing hide and seek. I had no idea this was going on. The March for Voting Rights that was led by Dr. King today is known as Bloody Sunday. In an attempt to stop the March for Voting Rights, state troopers violently attacked these demonstrators. I was born in this middle house on Short Pettus Street that was named after Edmund Pettus. These houses are popular in the South and they're known as shotgun houses because they say if you shoot a bullet through the front door, it will come straight out through the back door because of the way that the rooms are aligned. This low-lying area is known as Buckeye Bottom. After a very heavy rain, everything would flood and they would send men in canoes to take us up to higher ground. As in most towns, the railroad separates the black and the white communities. When I was around three or four years old, for some reason, I decided to cross these tracks, a very active train track, to go to my grandmother's house. On the other side of the track where the large trees are, there was a path, and I was on that path going to her house. Although the weeds were higher than my head, I could hear a horse coming. There was a white man on a big white horse coming my way. I turned and started to scream. Everyone could hear me screaming. And by the time I got back to the top of the train tracks, everyone was running toward me. Over 60 years later, I still remember the man on the white horse on this railroad track looking down at us. And now we're crossing the tracks together to get to my grandmother's house. For one reason or the other, we constantly moved. This was my grandmother's house, and the only thing left now are the two steps going up to the front door. I was going to this house when I crossed the railroad tracks earlier. We moved in with her when I was around four or five years old, and this was my first experience with an outdoor toilet. The scary outhouse was in the back by the clump of trees, and the creek that flooded at the previous house ran right in the back of the outhouse. We moved here. This house is located on a very short dirt road 
but is sandwiched between the historic Selma University on one end of the street, and on the other end is one door from the historic Ara B. Hudson High School, which played a pivotal role in the Civil Rights Movement of 1965. Brown Chapel AME Church is where my brothers and sisters attended mass meetings with Dr. King. It was the starting point for the Selma to Montgomery marches. As a child, I attended the Ward Chapel AME Church. In this house, my mother was out of town, and my sister gave me a surprise Sweet 16 party. The entire football team was invited to the party, and my mother came home early that night and put everybody out of the house. And as we did in the past, we were called home early from school to move that day before the sheriff would put us out. The next house I refused to move in. It was an abandoned house next to the creek, and it wasn't fit for man or beast to live in. We moved to this house where I lived for a year and a half before graduating from Selma High School. The Selma City Schools had been integrated by now, and the black and white kids were going to school together. <laughs>